This is The Competitive Edge with Ryan Smith. Welcome to The Competitive Edge. My name is Scott Burton and I'm here to help you answer a question that we all have. How can I get an edge in my business and life? Each week we're going to uncover how some of the most successful and inspiring entrepreneurs, entertainers, and thought leaders get an edge so you too can reach your full potential. Do you want more unique ideas and tactics like the ones we're about to share in this episode? Then you're gonna to wanna to do two things. The first is to subscribe to The Competitive Edge on iTunes so that you don't miss out on new ideas from future conversations. After this, you're gonna to wanna to go check out my main site, lifelonglearner.com. When you enter in your email address to join the Lifelong Learner community, you'll get access to my most advanced strategies to stack the deck in your favor. Again, that's life longlearner Dot com. This is bar none, the most bitching episode of this podcast. Most Saturdays while I was living in San Diego, I'd go to the farmer's market in Little Italy where I lived. During my first visit, I remember seeing these guys at their stand and they looked like they were having the time of their lives. Their product was called bitching sauce. People were flocking around their booth and the entire team was rocking tank tops. Naturally, I had to go and see what this was all about. I remembered trying my first sample of their bitching sauce, and it absolutely blew my mind. And now I've developed what is commonly known as a bitching addiction. Literally every Saturday, I go and I stocked up on this sauce so I had enough for the week and because I wanted to see the guys. Today, I am so fired up to have one of the co-founders of Bitching Sauce, Ryan Smith, on the show. Ryan is one of these guys who every time you see him, it's pretty easy to light up with joy. I wanted to bring him on the show to learn more about what he calls the bitchin' lifestyle, as well as how you go from having an idea or recipe to selling a product in stores across the country like Whole Foods. I love this episode for so many reasons, but one thing I particularly think is awesome is how Ryan and his siblings started this business with only a few hundred bucks in their pocket. If you've ever had the excuse that you don't have enough money to start a business, you're going to want to tune into this episode because the story of Bitch and Sauce absolutely obliterates this excuse. Ready to learn more about creating food products and the most bitching sauce in the world? It's time to get saucy with Ryan Smith. Ryan, what's up, dude? What's up, Scott? bitching day man i'm so excited to have you on here and i also real quick i just love how you sign off your email signature bitching day yeah you have to when you're living the bitching life dude (laughs) (laughs) dude you are man and i have to tell you you know not only i know you're living the bitching life because you're making my favorite sauce in the world and beyond that though you're you're probably you guys are like the people that i'm most excited to see on the first part of my Saturdays when you guys sell the stuff in the San Diego farmer's market. <laughs> Thank you. You're I ki- really appreciate that. You're killing it, dude. So tell me, uh, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about what bitch and sauce is if they're not familiar, if they're not currently living the bitch and lifestyle. All right. So if you don't currently have the bitch and addiction, bitch and sauce is a sauce that's made with almonds and it's bitchin' as in totally bitchin' dude. It's not bitching as in like you're complaining or something that like that. It actually has the opposite effect on people and totally cures them of all bitchingness and makes it totally bitch in. And uh, so basically, it's a sauce that you can dip, spread, smother on anything. And um, I would say what it's most similar to in that you can eat it like this is a hummus. But... Um, it's way more bitching than that. And there's no garbage bonzo beans in it. So it's, uh, it's clean. It is clean, man. And it's also, are you familiar with the paleo movement? Yes, I am very familiar with the paleo movement. So I know bitching is vegan, but I believe that it's also paleo friendly, right? It is paleo friendly. I would say like 90% paleo friendly. Um, I have a lot of paleo customers and it just depends on how strict paleo you are. If you're like diehard paleo, there's a few things in there that 
um, are not for the diehards, but if you're like 90% paleo, it's, it's good. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely a 90 percenter, um, maybe an 85 who's counting, but <laughs> I put it on everything, man. Literally I have a, I have a recipe. Um, and maybe this is TMI. I don't care because it's that good. It's called the bitch and bowl. Know. And yes. what it is, dude, me and my roommate make this. It's our favorite. It's our favorite recipe. It is bacon, avocado, long grain, white rice, three eggs, bitch and sauce, stir it up. Most delicious thing I've ever made. That is a bitch and bowl. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, it, it, it crushes it. Yeah. It, 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 um, you know, I'm on this, I'm on this diet, uh, called the zone diet. And it's like meant, huh. it's meant to kind of optimize, uh, just like your hormones. Um, and basically it's like a 40, a macronutrient profile of like 40% protein, 30% fats, 30% carbohydrates. And I do it on days that I lift and the bitch and bowl hits it, dude. It, it gets it just right from a macronutrient standpoint. And it's probably the tastiest thing. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. So yeah. what was that? It was bacon, eggs, some rice, the sauce. That's Those it, are, dude. You yeah, can, that was it. You can swap the bacon for like grass fed beef or chicken or whatever. But I mean, the bitch and bacon combo is <laughs> it's tops, dude. <laughs> yes. And which one do you use on? That? Oh, Chipotle. Chipotle. Yeah, yes. man. I mean, listen, I appreciate the ridge. I appreciate all the new fancy flavors. My roommate just brought home the, the roasted red pepper. The but double RP. That's it, dude. But it's, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Heck yes. Chipotle, and, most popular flavor we have. It reigns as king of all bitchin' sauce. So and so, it has since the beginning. So. so let's like rewind back to the beginning of the bitchin' realm or kingdom, one yes. might say. I mean, I feel like a lot of people out there, myself included, I have a cool little recipe. I like making it. I thought about productizing it, yeah. but I didn't follow through, right? Yeah. And I'm curious to learn a little bit about the origin story of the most amazing sauce in the world. The bitchin' origins. So, uh, my sister and I, we were living in Santa Barbara. I was a manny, which is a man nanny. And she, <laughs> what was she doing? She, she lived in, in the closet of my bedroom. <laughs> literally that's where her bed was dude she and was crashing in a manny closet she was crashing in a manny closet and we were having a great time we uh decided to eat vegan which was like it lasted maybe a month it was probably one of the worst decisions i made because all i thought about was food but also maybe one of the best decisions i made because from that we got bitch and sauce. We started experimenting with different products that um, we had grown up eating. We were raised kind of like, I call it like hippie type healthy. We were eating, um, you know, Bragg liquid aminos, which is kind of like a healthier uh, soy sauce substitute. And then um, we were eating nutritional yeast, which is called like hippie dust. It's what a lot of vegans use on all their different foods. Um, and so we were eating these things. Our mom was like feeding us this stuff. And so we decided why not just experiment and start coming up with some ideas. And we knew that there were some other products out there that were not based. There's nut based cheeses and there's like salad dressings that were not based. And um, we just went for it and got a version of bitch and sauce, but over a seven year period kind of dialed it into what bitch and sauce is right now. Got it. So yeah, you, so that's you, okay. I mean, this is homegrown, man. So you guys just started out with this recipe. Yes. And tell me about like when it, when it got time to be serious, when you started selling this to other people. Yeah. So this was, this was probably the biggest thing that we overcame. It was actually like starting because we're, we always had great ideas, like awesome ideas, like, oh, we should do this or oh, we should do that, but didn't really follow through with stuff. And um, 
the sauce was always an idea ever since we started making it because people loved it. People would like freak on it and they were getting the bitch and addiction. And we didn't even know that the bitch and addiction existed. We never, I mean, we didn't call it bitch and sauce at that time. And, um, my sister was working for a, uh, personal chef part time. And she came to me and she was like, we should start our own personal chef business. Um, and so I was like, okay, sweet. That sounds, that sounds good. At that time I was fitting shoes at a new balance store and selling shoes. And, uh, I, I've always been kind of like into projects on the side and doing stuff. And I knew I wasn't going to be fitting shoes forever. And, um, so we started this personal chef business and decided in order to get in front of people and find clients, why don't we go to a local farmer's market and bring some of our products and um, just kind of go from there. So that's really when Bitch and Sauce was born. Um, we decided to call the sauce Bitch and Sauce. It just came to us. There was no other name, no other way to describe the sauce, but it's just Bitch and we're like, we're in Southern California. This fits well. None of the all other ideas that we had were even worthy of the sauce. So bitching stuck. My mom told us, she's like, you guys are shooting yourself in the foot by calling it bitching sauce. Cause you know, she's thinking we're going to like offend everybody in the entire world. And so <laughs> we end up, uh, we end up going to a farmer's market. We bring some sauce. My sister makes a bunch of like vegan baked goods and spends like tons of hours till the middle of the night cooking all this stuff. And at the market, the sauce sold and um, everything else that was kind of a pain in the butt. We were like, why are we doing that? Why don't we just focus on the sauce? We'll still promote our personal chef service and go from there. And then the sauce just took off into its own thing. The personal chef thing never even happened. I believe it, man. I, I have the addiction. And honestly, I'm about to move back to the East Coast. And I'm worried that I might have yeah. to enter bitch in rehab. Ooh, yeah. That's a tough one. Um, yeah, we do not distribute to the East Coast yet. I and mean, we can ship it, but we're not in stores out there yet. And yeah. You're going to have to, I don't know what you're going to have to do. I mean, that's serious. Where are you going to? Are you going? I'm going back to, uh, to Manhattan, to New York city. Oh my gosh. It's all that's right, gonna... dude. I'm going to be the, I'm going to be a bitchy in auto in New York. Just being an ambassador, the bitch and ambassador <laughs> buying in bulk, yes. spreading the lifestyle, dude. Yes. So that, so this is one of the questions I had for you because <clears throat> about the brand, because I'm like, wow, you know, this sauce is literally the best sauce I've ever had. It's amazing. It's healthy. I can put it on anything. I can't stop eating it. But I was like, huh, I wonder if like this is ever going to go mainstream because the name might scare some moms or something. Yeah. So this is the interesting thing. Well, for everybody out there, bitching means excellent remarkably wonderful first rate. It's a slang term like that, I guess was born back in the sixties and it's just living on like our heart and our heads are in the right place with this. There are some people who take it the wrong way and will think of it in like the negative slang way. And, uh, we just to choose to think positive. And for anybody who's been to our booth, I mean, our booth is, we're just spreading the bitch in love and loving on people. And it's just, it's good times. There's maybe one in like 300 people who will actually say something and be like, you know, your name is whatever. And we'll show them the definition. And we'll say, you know, this is what it's about. <laughs> but then you have like 300 people come up and say, this is the greatest name I've ever heard. And yeah, let's live the bitch in life and you know, everything else. So it's, it far outweighs the few that, you know, don't understand. Totally. And like <laughs> how many, how many, like you guys have done a really good job creating something that's memorable that people like to talk about. Mm. I mean, here I am right now, like talk, like just excited to talk about bitch and sauce. And yeah. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know that I'd be as fired up if it was like red pepper hummus sauce or uh, yeah. Oh, whatever yeah. Like it is. Earth 
earth sauce or like California sauce. No, what one of the things when we were starting our business was we wanted to have a bigger impact on people and have the experience be have more tangible, in depth like relationship to it. I I guess that's I don't know how to explain it, but when people come and first they they see our sauce and the name already evokes emotion. And whether they like the name or not, they're talking about the name to somebody, you know? So whether it's, you know, oh, they had this bitch in sauce and I didn't like that name or whatever, they're talking about it. Or yeah. for the most part, it's positive and people are like, bitch in sauce, yeah. And then they, so you have the name going on and then you have the sauce where it tastes insanely bitchin'. Like the name is correct. It's like right on. It is bitch and sauce, and then people are freaking out about the taste. And then we are always living the bitch in life. And so we're going to say bitch and to you like all the time and like abs bitch and lootly and bitch and addiction and, you know, great things like that. And so on top of it, you have this lifestyle happening, and it has morphed not only from a product, but it's a lifestyle. We're, it's just all about living the bitch in life, whatever you're doing. I feel so strongly about that that I bought a bitch in t shirt. <laughs> oh, it's, does that fit, by the way? I, it, it absolutely, it fits. It's a tank top. It's a little tight, but that's how I like it. And <laughs> and yeah, man. I mean, I, I I I. It's so. It's I here. Here's what you've done, dude. You've created like such positive emotions, you guys around your booth and th your product and what you're selling, that I've wanted to give you my money. I'm like, I cannot buy any more sauce this week or else I'm going to put on some LBs because <laughs> I, I tend to abuse my sauce intake. Dude, bitch and LBs. They're the best kind. That's true. They may be a little different. But <laughs> I was like, God, I just want this sauce because I just, I'm so happy when I think of the brand. And I think you guys have just done a fabulous job with that. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're going for. Really, like, you know, when, I mean, every market is different. And every person who comes to our booth is different, but the goal remains the same for us is, I mean, cause we have the same conversation with hundreds of people, thousands of people. I've had the same conversation, but we, it's just not about us. You know, we make it about people. How can we serve and help and bless people to the max to where their minds are blown and that has been huge because people people know that it's like i'm not we aren't out to get ours it's just we're out to live the bitch in life and have people live the bitch in life with us and um you know they know that <laughs> <laughs> you know? amen dude so let's talk a little bit about you know the process for people that might be in a similar position and have maybe a food product or concoction that they've been thinking about, like making a real thing that they sell in stores that has nice packaging. So when you guys first started selling this, I assume it, you, you know, you just kind of had like blank jars or whatever, and you were making it in your kitchen. Yep. Maybe you can talk about the evolution of once you have something that starts selling uh, that you've been making in your kitchen, what happens next? How do you scale it? How do you start producing it? you know, at a rate that maybe you can start talking to grocery stores, that kind of stuff. Okay. So we're starting where you have a recipe and you know, it's good and you know, it will sell. And then going from that point. Yeah. What happens okay. next, man? Okay. Um, so the first thing is knowing that you have something solid um, what I've always encouraged people to do with new ideas is test your idea and make sure that you aren't just holding on to your grandmother's recipe or your mom's recipe thinking it's the greatest thing because you're emotionally attached and then going and putting all your eggs in this basket and going out there and nobody actually buys it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one thing you want to do is always test it first because that's, you know, there's if nobody's going to buy it and you can't help anybody with your product, then there's no business. Um, so that's like first things first And the farmer's markets have been a great test ground for us 
that has been, um, we haven't had to spend a lot of money and, or time to get it up and going and get a good test going. And all of our products that we make, every flavor of sauce, we send through the farmer's markets before we send them to stores just to make sure that, yes, this is bitching and it's, you know, it's going to sell. Can anybody set up a stand at a farmer's market if they like contact the people who run it? Sure. Yeah. I mean, there's a few hoops to jump through legally with like the health department and, um, you know, certified kitchens and things like that. But it's really easy. My encouragement to people is that it's easy. It is a process though. So, um, you know, if you have, if you have a product and you know, it's good, the best thing to do when you're starting is figure out, this is what someone told me when we were starting. This helped me big time. Um, figure out the experience that you want to have with what you're doing. So um, that's the question this guy asked me. He's like, what experience do you want out of this, out of our business? And um, my answer to this guy, he was a business coach. My answer to him was, um, I don't know what other companies have done, so I don't know what's available. And he was like, Ryan, he's like, you're seeing really, really small and you're, you have tunnel vision. He's like, you need to expand your, your vision because you can do whatever you want as long as it works. And I was like, oh my gosh, why am I limiting myself to somebody else's dream? And so um, we got really specific. My sister and I got really specific about what we wanted when we started our business. We, when we started, we were not, we did not have a lot of money at all. We had 200 bucks that was given to us. Wow. Um, we both were laid off from our jobs. I was buying and selling surfboards to pay the bills. And we, I mean, we did not make a lot of money at all and struggled financially for a big part of our life. And, um, so when we got clear and focused on what we wanted, which for me, I wanted to get out of debt. I wanted to have jobs for my family and I wanted to be able to support myself and support a wife too, because I wasn't married at the time. Those were my goals. <laughs> and my sisters, my sisters were a little different, but all along the same line. And so we got very focused on, okay, in order to accomplish this, what is it going to take? So we started with this end goal in mind and worked backwards and figured out, okay, we need this many farmers markets, which means we need this much help, which means we need all this stuff and just got really detailed about, you know, like a game plan or a railroad track to the end goal. And, um, once, once we did that, things just were firing on all, on all cylinders and anybody can do it. it it's not hard it's a, it's just a process, you know? Right. That's, that's really inspiring, man, because <clears throat> there's a lot of people that are probably listening to this and saying, yeah, okay, cool. But like, I don't have enough money to start a business. Oh, and I have, I have to touch on that. Please do. That was my number one, uh, excuse. I don't have enough money to start. And it's so it's so interesting where I'm at now. I can't believe I said that because it's there is so much money out there and there's it's not like there's a lack of money out there. Like at the time, I may not have had a lot of it, but that that is it's just not a good excuse. And I'll tell you why. When when you get when you get focused on a goal and you say, okay, this is where I want to be. Like my sister and I saying, okay, we want to make this much money at the end of the year. We want to have jobs for family and all of our goals. Um, when we got focused on that, something happens where you get connected from point A to point B. And, and it just happened. Like God took us from point A to point B and connected us like, cause we were very single minded on the goal and it just happened. And so if it takes, 
And why I say it's a process, let's say you have no money and you need, you know, let's say you need like $200 for a permit. You can find a quarter a day somewhere and just start putting it away. And you are moving, you're committed, you're moving in the right direction. You find that quarter, you put it away, you find that quarter. Now, it's a process, but you're moving in the right direction. And what happened with us is we had this end of the year goal. When we uh, first started, we made this goal. And we were, I mean, at that time, we had only been to one farmer's market. And our end of the year goal was, you know, lofty. It seemed from, you know, where we were at, we reached that goal in five months. Wow. Can you, do you mind, do like you mind me asking if it was that a financial number that you can share? Yeah, we wanted to make, um, well, what we said is we wanted to make personally 4,000 bucks each a month. That's like, that's what we wanted to make our business. Obviously, you know, money was going other ways to be able to support that. But um, personally, we each wanted to bring in 4,000 bucks a month. And you guys did that in five months. In five months, yeah. Starting with only $200. Starting with 200 bucks that was given to us by our cousins. <laughs> that is amazing, man. Our, our first paycheck, because we paid back, like how we did it is we set up our business to kind of, we set it up so that it would feed itself. And we wouldn't, we weren't like taking all the money from our business. We had a really good foundation to set it up with like a really good st structure. And, um, after we had everything paid back that $200, I think my first paycheck was like eight bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. For the win. Yeah. I was like, it works. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, dude. I love it. Talk to me about, so. I'm like very curious about the logistics of this. So, you know, you guys went and did you start renting out a larger kitchen by like storing ingredients in your garage? Like how did it, how does it actually look in the early days of running a food business? Oh man. Um, early days of the food business. It's a lot of learning for us cause we were not in the food industry ever, any of us, but, um, there's what we did was we we all moved out of the different houses that we lived in and we all moved into the same house to cut down expenses because we were driving back and forth and trying to communicate and all this stuff and we realized it was just costing too much money and so we decided to all move in together so i lived in the house with my sister her husband their baby both my parents and some other roommates and we just figured you know what we're just gonna buckle down and get this done and you know this is just what it takes so there was a lot i mean it was crowded we were stashing stuff in our garage like coolers market equipment um when you make a food product you have to have a certified kitchen so we had a rented kitchen that was down the road where we could make our product. Um, but I mean, we had, we had a commercial refrigerator in our living room that would like, it wasn't a very nice one. It would like clank and, you know, had this nice little hum to it that, you know, put you to bed at night. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm a big fan of the fan with the blanket over it just for the noise. Yeah, exactly. We called our, our first fridge Magda. She was, <laughs> She did a good job. <laughs> she was reliable. We know that much. She was. So, um, you know, for us, it was, it was a lot of just, you know, cutting out stuff we didn't need and just getting real focused. And so we started, you know, out of our house. And then um, it finally got to the point where we were like, we're, we're in a position where we can rent our own space. You know, we don't have to go to a shared kitchen we can do our own thing. And it seemed daunting at first getting our, our own kitchen because we went and talked to some other people who had commercial kitchens and they were like, you know, it cost me, you know, $35,000 to get this thing up and going. And so we're like, wow, that's a huge chunk of money, especially <laughs> when you're like a startup business. And one of our 
our values in the beginning was we did not want to take on any investors. We wanted to keep it all in the family and we just wanted to let it grow organically and just work for it and see it happen. And so, um, we got to the point where we could rent out a space and we got our kitchen up and going for, I think it was like 3000 bucks. Wow. That's amazing. Now, do you, I mean, does that include all the equipment? Yeah, we, we, we are Craigslist masters. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to say so. Cause I mean, I imagine one of the items that I've actually looked at because <clears throat> sorry, I have like this like sinus thing going on. I have uh, I was creating my own nut butters for a while, and Ooh. do you guys do you guys have a nut crusher? No. Okay, so bitch and sauce does not require a nut crusher. Well, we have. I mean, we have things that will crush nuts, and we did crush nuts for a long time, but we we found better ways. Got it. I mean, really, dude, what it sounds like happened over that process you just described is. You decided to say, I'm going to stop shooting all over myself <laughs> and make a decision to go on a bitching mission. Yes. To make this work. Exactly. Got to the point where I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm tired of having no money, I'm tired of my family jumping from job to job. And this is happening. Dude. And it's just been insane. I've, I, it tugs on my heart just like thinking about it. I feel like I'm watching Rudy and he just made the sack. Yeah. Oh, I'm at that point in the movie. I'm like in tears. I just like tapped out in tears. I still cry every time. <laughs> every time. I still cry every time. Without I'm, fail. The music. It, oh gosh. Oh, I love it, dude. I love it. Is there a bitch and theme song by the way? Oh, uh, you, you, there's a lot of aspects to bitch in this that people don't realize, which is interesting. They know, I mean, they know us at the markets and they know that we're living the bitch in life, but there's a lot of things that we do that people don't know. And, uh, we actually have a, uh, a sauce band that goes along with our bitchiness. It's called uh, sir sauce a lot and the saucy sirs. Dude. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and we put together, we do play, but we'll play covers and stuff, but we put together our own music as well. And um, one of the things we're working on right now is just bitching videos because that's an aspect of our business that a lot of people who don't, <clears throat> people who don't live in Southern California and people who don't see us at farmer's markets, they, they get the aspect of the product if they're buying it at a store but they don't get the whole bitch in this. So we're launching videos, but the music to the videos is all stuff done by us. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> so that's something that we're working on. <laughs> Do, your, your YouTube channel is going to be so bitching. Oh, it's gonna I'm going to be your awesome. first subscriber. <laughs> yeah. I, I need to, I need to make it. We, I don't even, I think, I think there's only one video that I put up. I don't even know if it's, it might be my own personal YouTube thing. I got to get better at that. That's one aspect of business that I'm like, I got to get on this video thing, the, the whole social media thing. <laughs> so talk to me about, um, I know, so you guys started off in farmer's markets, but you eventually, I mean, I was at Jimbo's the other day and you guys are now in plenty of grocery stores. Yeah. What does that process yeah, so. look like? How did you guys, how did you guys get into the stores? So basically I went to one of our most bitching stores. Um, it, there, well, there's two, there's two like original stores that we started at that really helped us in the process. It's Seaside Market in Cardiff and they're living the bitching life. If you haven't been there, that store is so bitching. Totes and on then, my to-do list. And then there is a uh, cream of the crop in Oceanside. And these are just, you know, family owned, um, more natural food type grocery stores, really high quality products in there. Uh, basically what I did for stores, uh, we got to the point where we were like, I think we had, we kind of tapped as many markets as we wanted to at that time. And so we were like, well, why don't we 
figure out this store thing. So I went into Seaside Market with my product and I asked for the guy who's in charge of buying. And uh, I just told him, I said, hey, I have this product. I sell it at farmer's markets. It's super popular. It sells really well. I know nothing at all about getting my product into stores and, you know, what stores require, what what they want, pricing, all this stuff. And I said, I just need you to, like, teach me and kind of walk me through it if you can. And he was awesome. He was like, well, you know, this is this is basically the process. This is you know, the margin that stores are going to take, um, you know, this is, he just walked us through it. And so, um, that was how we got our feet wet in the stores and we got our product into seaside market and, um, cream of the crop as well. And it sells, it just sells like crazy there. So I believe it. So, I mean, we didn't even have nutrition facts when we got our product into the store, which it's funny because a lot of people who are starting, you know, new products, they'll ask us for advice and stuff. And I was like, I wouldn't focus on like, I'd focus on the important things and don't focus on certain like things that don't make you money <laughs> until someone like is like, Hey, you need to have nutrition facts. <laughs> I think people can get caught up in like all the logistics of, different things and it's like the stuff that doesn't really you know move things forward the number one thing is making sure your products on the shelf and selling <laughs> dude it's amazing the stories that we come up to tell ourselves to prevent ourselves from doing something oh my gosh it's like oh dude i don't know how many like ounces of grapeseed oil i need in this for it to be fda approved up oh, shouldn't do it yeah yeah exactly like, <laughs> oh this is too hard <laughs> yeah it's, man it's a process and I would not trade any of the process for anything like the starting with $200 working 16 hour days, like nonstop putting, I mean, we put in some hard hours. We worked our butts off. Like we, we still do. And, but the process, I mean, I cut out labels by hand, these circular labels, and the sticky thing on the back wouldn't even peel off. It was the most pain in the ass job I've ever done. I, it's a job from hell. I never want to do it again. But I so appreciate now that I have pre-printed packaging. <laughs> you oh, know, I bet. Like knowing where you come from, it's it's just the process is awesome. Yeah, yeah. sometimes <laughs> those those scrape your knees experiences really just end up resulting in a ton of gratitude and they end up being amazing blessings. Exactly. Yeah. I've heard from, <clears throat> sorry, man, this allergy thing. I have um, some friends who have a company called uh, Health Warrior. I think they're like uh -huh. one of the largest uh, chia bars in the country. Huh. And I, I think was, I've heard of this bar. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's not bitching, but it's good. <laughs> and they were telling me how like such a critical component of their success is once they got in the stores, they had to sell. And in order to sell, they had to go and do the whole free sample thing and have somebody in the store. Oh, and yeah. that's really the way that they, they were able to get traction. Oh yeah. Is that what you found as well? Yeah. Same thing. The, especially for a product like ours, um, our product's very niche in the stores, uh, it, it says bitchin' sauce on it. People look at it and they, you know, they think it's cool and like bitchin', but they have no clue what it tastes like. And so without tasting it, it's hard to sell. I mean, if I, if I threw my product in a new store right now without any demo support where people could come and taste it, it wouldn't go. It would, it wouldn't be a success. So, um, pretty much you have to have, you have to be tasting out your product. And so as we grow into different areas, like we just launched into, um, the Rocky mountain whole foods region, which is like Colorado, uh, Kansas, New Mexico, Utah, and Idaho. So we just launched our product out there. And so what we did is we moved out to Colorado for like a month and a half 
and set up a team of bitchin' ambassadors out there to go and do demos at all the different stores. And when you do that, I mean, you definitely gain traction. And if you don't do that, it's not going to go as big as it could. You know, unless you have insane amounts of, like, marketing money and you can, you know, throw out commercials or whatever. But, you know, we don't, so. <laughs> what what's what's the process like for getting into Whole Foods? Because I know that's that's kind of like the pinnacle. Like some people think they've made it if they get into Whole Foods. Yeah, um, Whole, Whole Foods is an insane, awesome accomplishment, and um, there. Are, I think it's interesting that you say like once people get into Whole Foods, they think they've made it because not so true. Um, when it actually comes down to it, there's a lot of people with that mindset who have products and they get their product into whole foods and they're like, great, we did it. It's in whole foods. Now I don't have to do anything anymore. And so they don't do the, those demos. They don't do, um, they don't provide that support for their product and their product just ends up failing, which is interesting because once you get to the store, you got to make sure it sells and you're the one responsible for that the store will support you but really you got to support your brand um for us getting into whole foods it took it was a process i think it took nine months from when we initially contacted them wow. and uh and it just whole foods is a big company with a lot of a lot of people and you're dealing with a lot of different people a lot of ins and outs and hoops and certifications and audits and all this stuff. So, um, it's just a process, you know? Well, how, how has that really changed your business? Whole foods? Yeah. Whole foods has been amazing. Um, for us to expand and grow, it's nice having a solid account that can be a foundation for an area. So, for example, we are um, we are expanding into the Bay Area uh, currently, and we want to get it into a bunch more stores than just Whole Foods. But to have like a stronghold of like thirty stores in an area um, to start with, and then build off of that, it's just a great foundation. So, Whole Foods has been really instrumental in. Um, being able to expand to other stores and get a good solid foundation going because, you know, let's say a small store up in the Bay area wants our sauce. It doesn't make sense for me to ship just one store my sauce, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So with whole foods, we can make an assault of, you know, on, we can make an assault on like 30 stores just launching right off the bat. And, you know, that's a lot of volume going through 30 stores. And um, so, yeah, it's been it's been really great. We're we're at a tipping point right now where stores are are becoming like the meat and potatoes. Um, for a long time, farmers markets were our meat and potatoes because uh, we did like, man, we did like 20 farmers markets a week. And um the money from that was great because it's it was great seed money to support our business and you know you're not selling it through a store so you're not selling it wholesale to somebody and you know you're selling it direct to customers so um it's just it's just great seed money and that's been a great thing for us and i don't think i don't know if there's anywhere else in the world that we could do the Taking the path that we did, I don't think we could do that anywhere else in the world because the weather down here is so nice. They have farmer's markets all year long. And so we're able to do these farmer's markets all year. And I know that, you know, East Coast farmer's markets, they might have like one big one indoors, but a lot of stuff shuts down during the winter. That's a summer thing, dude. Yeah. That's exactly. so cool. <clears throat> and you know what's really cool, man, is so how many grocery stores are you in total at this point? Oh, man, I don't even know. <laughs> I have no clue. I think we're like over 100. 
it's what I what I why I brought this up is because you guys are over in a hundred stores. Your things are selling like hotcakes, bitch and hotcakes. Totally Yet bitchin'. every Saturday, man, you guys are still out <laughs> on the street, slinging your product, hustling. And it's not just the the one by my crib. Like I go over in Ocean Beach, I see bitch and sauce guys and high five in them. Maybe yeah. even a chest bump after a chipotle. <laughs> a chipotle, bitch and chest bump. Dude, one, one one question that me and my roommate Justin actually had, who's also a bitching auto, is yes. do you guys ever get tired of talking like this? Because I don't. And and we were just like, man, they they just talk all day in this amazing bitching lifestyle tonality yeah you can't it's science proven that you can't get tired of saying the word bitching it's just it's just too bitching <laughs> <laughs> i don't i i haven't it's just, it's i i never will like the it's so funny when we first started i did not i did not i wasn't living the bitching life as much as i am now and it just keeps getting crazier and crazier like the lines we just keep crossing it further and further into bitchin land. And once you go there, you can't come back. We're gone. <laughs> That's a one way ticket. It's, it's, it's a one way ticket. Like it's expected too. if, if I'm not on my game and I say something other than like bitchin this people, people will be like, you know, they come for the experience. They come to the markets because they want to live the bitch in life too. I want bitch and bravado every Saturday. That's why I come. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, we, you can't get tired of it. I've, I haven't gotten tired of it yet. It's, you know, it, even the sauce I eat, I eat the hell out of bitch and sauce. It's, it's, and, it's so cool. So like my background is in software and there's a lot of guys who are making. Did you say? Did you say sauceware? Oh, I, I wish would, I did. I, that sounds about right. I wish I was in <laughs> sauceware. Although I'm, con I'm, I'm honestly contemplating it uh, after this interview. But <clears throat> you know, there's all these guys who are like building companies. They're slogging away. They're miserable. They're you know, they're doing all this stuff they hate to like maybe get rich, even though there's a very low likelihood. And I, <clears throat> I just see you guys. And you guys are just rocking it, like so full of joy mm -hmm. uh, in your hearts. You love your product. You love helping people. Mm -hmm. And I'm just pointing my finger and saying, these guys got to figure it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. We are so thankful to just, it really, God has blessed us and our family huge and even when we were going through tough times before our business, you know, struggling financially, he was, he's always been there ready to, you know, provide for us in every way. And that is, that is the reason for the bitch in this. It's so funny too, cause you know, I'll, I'll, sometimes I'll tell people, I'll be like, have a bitch in day. And they'll be like, I'm going to have a blessed day. And I'm like, yeah, okay, have a have a blessed day too. <laughs> and it's so funny they don't realize that like we're we're Christian and totally living the bitch in life, and it's you know it's all totally bitch. <laughs> oh, dude, you know, it's I, so funny. It's so funny. I'm like, man, if they only knew. <laughs> I love it, dude. And you know, you, you got a uh, another Christian here, and my dream is actually to operate at such a high level um, and to build something so awesome that people ask questions. And for me to say, you know, I have the best business partner in the world and his name is God. Heck yes. And I just love it, man. And and it, I tell you what, I recommitted my, I'm a little hesitant to talk about this in my podcast, but whatever. Uh, <clears throat> I recommitted myself to my faith like six weeks ago, got rebaptized. And I have to tell you more abundant blessings have flown into have been flourishing in my life since that moment than ever before and i'm more filled with joy and uh it's amazing dude it really is amazing dude that's the most bitching ever yes <laughs> yes it is <laughs> so yeah I, through this through this whole process it's like one thing i realized is i was like you know what god is like our number one fan he is like rooting us on 
and <laughs> and it's just constant. Like the the things that have happened in our business, there's stuff that has happened like miracles of things where, like, you know, the, you know, you know, are you familiar with like a walk-in fridge? I I like a yeah, like at like a big beer store or something. Yeah, big beer store. They have big walk-ins and stuff. Well, we got to the point where we needed a walk-in, and I knew we needed a walk-in. Um, and so I was just like, you know what, God, we need a walk-in. I know it's coming at some point. We didn't, we, we've never really worried about too much with our business. We're like, you know what, it's just going to happen at the right time. Just been patient. We're going along with the process and stoked. And so like, it'll happen. <laughs> I ended up, well, walk-ins are like 5,000 bucks. They're expensive, you know? And this is the point at a point in time where we didn't have like a lot of money at all. Like, $200 for equipment was a lot to me. And so anyways, through this crazy Craigslist process thing, I ended up getting a walk-in for free through Craigslist. Whoa. It was insane. It was, I, I, I this restaurant was closing down. They're like, I just need to get this stuff out of here. And the guy was like, the guy was like, um, you know, I need the walk-in out. I need all this other equipment out. I was like, well, what do you want for the walk-in? He was like, I was thinking four, you know, but no more than five. And I'm thinking like $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, $100? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, $400, you got a deal. And then I ended up taking out a bunch of other stuff from the restaurant and sold that on Craigslist. And it ended up complete wash for free. Dude, <laughs> I, it, that's just, it was just God work, <laughs> man. If he is for us, who can be against us? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. it, doggy. He's, that's it. He's our number one fan. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, dude, I'm, I'm just beaming right now. <laughs> so I guess I want to finish this as like one last question, man. Um, yeah. because I could talk about this stuff all day, but you know, I, I, I want to respect everybody's worldviews. Um, if you could, so you, you've, you've been in this business for a while, man. You guys are following all cylinders. You're at a tipping point. If you could go back in time and tell yourself one thing that you know now about starting a food business, what would it be? And it, it can be a couple things if, if there isn't one particular thing. I could go back in time to which point in the process. So go back in time to day one where you're like, you know what? We're going to do this. I'm going to do this food product. It's going to be the most bitchin' experience and ride ever. If you could if you could get into the into Ryan's ear and say, "Make sure you do this at some point." What would that be? Mm. Mm. I would say Oh my gosh. Make sure you do this. Oh man. I don't know. I don't know. I I don't think I would change anything about the process. I mean, like all the stuff that has happened has happened for reasons. I'm sure there's things that have been like, oh, we'll never, we won't do that again. But we, I mean, we learned it. Um, but there's not like this big thing where I'm like, oh, if I had only, you know, like. <laughs> Maybe, you know what, there is, there's a company out there that we hired that I wouldn't have hired again. <laughs> and that just happened recently. So I would tell myself, don't hire that company. <laughs> <laughs> but there's not this epiphany like thing of like, you know, do this. I mean, the biggest, one of the biggest things for us, especially in like a family business, because you got, I mean, you got dynamic happening. You have myself, you got my sister you got my brother so you have you have three different hearts you know coming together on one goal and then you have to communicate with each other and i know that you know a lot of times people have hard times communicating with their brothers and sisters and other stuff i'm be i'm best friends with my family i love my family we hang out like we go, we're all saucing in the kitchen or whatever. And it's like, what are we doing? Okay. We're going to go hang out and like have beers and pizza and stuff. 
So <laughs> um, the biggest thing for us was is communication. And it, even though like there were some arguments that we've had just working through stuff, the greatest thing that we've remembered throughout the process is that, hey, you know what? We're on the same team. We want the same goal. We both are well-intentioned. And so, you know, this isn't, this isn't like a, it's not like a person against a person. This is like us trying to figure out the best way. And a lot of the, any little hiccups that happened, it just was due to like communication and stuff. So, um, there, because the process has been so insane, there's nothing that I would tell myself except, you know, some of the little learning things that have happened where it's like, uh, you know, I wouldn't have hired that person. Um, you know, and then, you know, we'd avoid a few things, but that's good learning too. So I actually have another question. Uh, <laughs> you've, you've given me a bitch and brainstorm moment here. What is it? So now that you guys are further along, I'm curious, like, what is your day? Like, are you continuing to sauce it up in the kitchen, making sauce? Are you more like big picture stuff? So, uh, with our vision of growth, um, my job has changed a lot since the beginning. Uh, well, since in the beginning I was doing like everything, but since we've grown, things have morphed. I haven't made sauce in like a year, maybe over a year. I haven't even gone into the kitchen. We kind of branched certain aspects of our business off. So, uh, my sister star, she's in charge of, She's like the backbone of our company. She does all financial stuff. She does all of our um, graphic design. It's all done by her. She's like on that. And she runs the kitchen, purchasing. She does so much. She's insane. She's like Wonder Woman. And she has two kids as well, two young kids. At the same time, she's insane. So... Um, she does that. She runs the kitchen. Her husband is the main sauceteer and he runs, he runs the kitchen with, uh, his brother, Harry, um, my brother's brother-in-law, Joel. And then, um, there's Luke is the guy who runs the kitchen, Luke's sister as well. So it's still all like in the family, but we're branching out. And then my job is I do weekend markets. So I do Little Italy and Hillcrest. Those are the two like big markets. So we definitely like to make an appearance there and, you know, continue the bitchiness. And then um, we focus on expansion right now. Expansion and we try to keep ourselves out of um, doing stuff that is just like, something that we can hire somebody else to do because in order to grow, we need to focus on like the entrepreneurial, like vision, new products, new ways to market, um, just all those like innovative new ideas. Um, that's what we are focusing on. So my week right now, we just hired someone to do our deliveries locally because we were doing all our local, our own local distribution. So we hired one of our buddies to, take over our deliveries. So during the week, um, it's just a lot of push days. We call them push days. Um, just where we're figuring out how we're going to, you know, sauce the world and bitch in this. <laughs> Dude. Well, it sounds like you guys are in just bitch and beast mode <laughs> right now. <laughs> Loving it. And I'm glad that you can, uh, you know, within that growth strategy, get some bitch and love on a podcast. Heck yeah. Thanks for the opportunity to uh, be a part of your podcast. It's been the most bitch in time. I'm so stoked. You, are, you literally are our most bitch in customer. Oh man. I'm blushing. <laughs> I, I have to, you said you were just saying some funny, funny, funny shit the other day. Gosh, you, you were like, when you, you were, Figuring out our names, you're like Porter, Ryan, Scott, and then you like looked looked up and you're like thinking to yourself, you're like bitching trio. 
<laughs> you had me rolling when you said bitch and trio i was like oh this guy is gone he had he has crossed the line uh, <laughs> oh man i love it so man if people want to get their hands on some bitch and sauce or at least learn more about you guys where's the best place for them to go okay so if you want to get your hands on bitch and sauce if you're in southern california you can hit up whole foods and that's probably the best place to do it. There's other places in San Diego, a lot of stores. To see all the places where we're at, um, best place to go is our website, even though our website is super jank. And I built it, and I don't build websites. So bear with us there. We are launching a new website that's going to be a lot better. Um, but yeah, website. If you're in Colorado area, you can find Bitch and Sauce. We're coming to the Bay, Bay Area here, hopefully within the month. And uh, we're on Instagram, and we have a Facebook too. And those those are the places to like stay up to date with new things coming out, like new products and you know just Bitch and Ness. Yeah, and make sure to check out the recipe recipes page because I'm very intrigued by the Bitch and Za. Oh, the bitch and za. Dude, a little double RP on a pizza would be insane. The roasted red pepper flavor that we just launched, that thing on pizza mm. is ridiculous. Man, I love yeah. it, dude. Well, Ryan, thank you so much, man. This has been a blast. Scott, really appreciate it, dude. You have the most bitching day. Before we finish up with today's Mindshare, I just want to say thanks for listening to another episode of The Competitive Edge. If you enjoyed the ideas in this episode and want access to future conversations, the best thing you can do is subscribe to The Competitive Edge on iTunes. If you haven't done that already, right now is the best time to take care of that and get on board. And while you're there, if you feel like this show has made a positive impact on your day, it'd be great if you could leave us an iTunes review so that more people can find the show. Now, I know we covered a lot in this episode, and there might be a few key ideas or tools that you want to remember. So we went ahead and compiled all of the notes and links mentioned from this conversation for you on lifelonglearner.com. That's life-longlearner.com. Alrighty, let's go ahead and dive into today's Mindshare. Alrighty, what a bitching episode with the man, the myth, Ryan Smith. That rhymes, wasn't even planning that. Anyways, I thought Ryan brought up a really good point that I wanted to riff on right now in this Mindshare segment. You see, the story that Ryan was telling himself about not starting the business was that he didn't have enough money. And if you look at your own life, there's probably a lot of instances where you're telling yourself a story. You're fabricating some rationale to prevent you from doing this thing that you know you want to do, that you know you need to do. And when I realized this in my life, that I actually, in many instances, was just creating stories instead of doing the things that I needed to, I really realized that I was holding myself back. And what these stories are are essentially manifestations of limiting beliefs. See, we all have limiting beliefs. I still have limiting beliefs, but those don't show up as, oh, hey, my name is limiting belief. I don't have enough money or I can't lose weight or I can't start a business, whatever it is. Those shows up, show up as a story. So what I would love for people to think about um, and, and just kind of part with this piece of advice is what stories are you telling yourself that are preventing you from st stepping into greatness, that are preventing you from doing the things that you always wanted, from having the body that you wanted, from having the partner that you wanted, from living where you always wanted, from going on a trip that you always wanted? Odds are that there is some story that you've told yourself that's really stemming from a limiting belief that's preventing you from getting what you want or living the life that you want. And this is an exercise that... I did at Unleash the Power Within, and it was pretty amazing to me just to see all these ways and areas of my life where I was actually self-sabotaging my own dreams by creating these stories. So if you have a minute today, this practice 
can be pretty transformational of just sitting down, writing out things that you want for your life, and then writing out what stories you tell yourself about why you can't get those things or why you haven't gotten those things. Because honestly, they're probably just stories. They're not truths. They're not insurmountable things that cannot be overcome with enough desire and motivation. They're just stories that that really are there just to protect ourselves. So do this exercise. It might be pretty amazing for you. And, you know, unbelievable things can happen in your life when you decide that that story is not something that you're willing to put up with anymore. And you said you just make a decision that you're going to go do it like Ryan did with his siblings and bitch and sauce. Anyways, I, I just cannot stress enough that these stories are really just things that often aren't true, uh, that prevent us from greatness, from having everything we ever want. And I just encourage you to, to just power through those stories, to realize that, that what it is is just a story, it's not the truth, and that you can overcome these things uh, and ultimately grasp and seize those things that you really, really want for your life. Thanks again for listening. I really appreciate it. And I cannot wait to see you next time on The Competitive Edge.